Welcome, and follow me, I have the Samsung Galaxy A14 and today I will go for unboxing along with a quick overview of this phone. So before I get started, I will mention that this device is a budget phone uh, from Samsung coming at about 170 US dollars and just pop it open and see what we get in the box. I will also uh, probably I mentioned that um, this phone seems a little bit overpriced considering from Samsung's own uh, lineup there is a better alternative, the A14 5G, which uh, doesn't only come with 5G but several other uh, features which this phone doesn't have and they cost about the same price from what I can see. So if you can get them literally at the same price uh, then without second thought you should go for the 5G version of this device because it's going to be faster and have more features over this one like higher refresh rate display, um, better processor for the most part which uh, in my opinion is the uh, number one like reason to upgrade it or just go with the 5G version. But anyway sticking with this one let's just open it up. So in typical uh, Samsung fashion all we get is uh, a waste of paper as you can see and uh, charging cable type-c to type-c without a charger which for the budget device uh, one would argue that they should probably add like a 10 watt charger at least uh, that would be actually nice now and here we have our device Eesh, not the best Feeling experience. Ugh. Oh yes, budget feeling as heck. There we go. And also, as typical Samsung fashion, we don't have any kind of pre-applied protection onto our phone. We have a massive chin at the bottom. Uh, that is huge. That's what she said. Um, which, yeah, even at, at this price range, this is a little bit too big for my liking. Uh, there are devices that basically cost less and look better than this, which kind of says a lot. But anyway, hopefully the rest of the device can make up for this. So, uh, starting off with the display, it's an LCD IPS, or not, LCD PLS display. It's a 6.6 .6 inch display, 80% uh, screen to body ratio with 400 pixels per inch, meaning that we have a 1080p resolution, so more precisely 1080 by 20 408 resolution so the res right here is pretty nice the display will be looking pretty sharp and well decent as you would expect from a samsung device uh the only downside is we don't have like an amoled display right here we just have lcd display which might not be as bright in in direct sunlight and number two won't have these nice contrasts with like for instance uh, when something is black on the screen it just completely turns off the pixels or make it i don't I'm not exactly sure if amoled actually turns off the pixels but if it doesn't then it's close enough to off that you basically can't really tell and uh, we will not have that here so we go that's basically the screen now flipping it over we have a camera setup a triple camera setup now i'll be completely honest with you this is just a dual camera setup at best so the main sensor is a 50 megapixel f uh, 1.8 uh, wide sensor then we have a 5 megapixel f 2.2 ultra wide and then we got a sticker camera which is 2 megapixel macro you shouldn't use that at all uh, this is absolute garbage lens you can tape it up and you will not see any kind of downside of that uh, and also if you're wondering why would you want to like, discard this sensor uh, now as typical as that is 5 megapixel sensor let me just uh, set it up so i can show you or five, a 50 megapixel sensor will capture significantly higher quality photos compared to the 2 megapixel macro now macro allows you to get really close to the subject but at 2 megapixels you might be getting close to it but you ain't capturing shit with it and in, uh, in terms of like quality and at that point your 50 megapixel from further away will capture higher quality picture and when you zoom it in which you can you will still have a higher resolution and higher fidelity picture compared to uh compared to well uh the two megapixel macro which obviously is a little bit disappointing 
I'm gonna put in the password because Samsung. Now it's beyond me why I need to connect to network when setting up the device when it's brand new. It's absolutely stupid. Just as this step is absolutely, I think, stupid. Why do I need to restart the phone? And why do I need to wait to restart the phone is also baffling. Can't wait for 2024. If that's where Samsung is going with their shitty phones. Great. Just, uh, just uh, to kind of clarify this, there is almost no other phone that requires you to reboot the phone when you're setting it up because you literally just turned it on. Whatever it was doing could have been done when it was turning on. So it's the absolute stupidity of Samsung and whatever the shit that they're running in the background that needs to basically be rebooted for not your own benefit. Now anyway, while it's rebooting for no reason, I'm gonna go to internals, which obviously you cannot see really. So we have a Helio G80 processor and we have four or six gigs of RAM with 64 or 128 uh, gigs of built-in storage, depending on which one you go. The 64 has four gigs and 128 has six gigs of RAM. So basically pick and choose whichever one you want. Obviously more RAM, you also need to get more storage. So obviously the price will be also more expensive. Um, we also have a 5,000 5, milliamp hour battery in here. So a pretty decent battery size. And just quickly check out. I think we do have, oops, we do have a expendable storage, but I'm gonna check just to be certain. And yes, we do. So you could technically go for the cheapest one. And even if you need more than 64 gigs of storage, you can pop in an SD card and you should be good to go. And in terms of internals, that's about it. Now, I did mention at the beginning that you should probably look into the 5G version of this device. And the reason for that is the 5G version of this phone will have a better display. So it will be at, at, nine, sorry, at 90 hertz, a better processor, which is Exynos uh, 1330, uh, more RAM uh, if you choose to go for it. And apart from that, it's for the most part all the same. But the 90 hertz display on the higher or the 5G version, in my opinion, will be a little bit better. And obviously, uh, the faster processor uh, will also be a little bit nicer when you just trying to go through a daily use of this device. So you will open up apps a little bit quicker. Now I'll be I'll be honest and say that the upgrade between like the Helio and the Exynos is not significant. It is faster, and if it's at the same price, there is no reason to go for uh, to not go for it. Uh, but the upgrade, if it costs more, I don't think it will be justified. Like even if it's ten bucks more, twenty most certainly, I would already uh, start to not really consider it. The other benefit here is that uh, the 5G version of this device, uh, apart from just having a faster processor and uh, more RAM and all that stuff. Uh, obviously it has 5G connectivity, which this device does not have. But other than that, they're basically both the same devices. Now, this should be right about done setting up. I want to basically show you the camera, how it captures the photos and how meaningless the 2 megapixel sensor is. Should be almost done, uh, but not before we get a little bit of Samsung trash. Yep, skip, yep, skip all, all, skip out on all that because it's just garbage. And there we go. Now, uh, for everybody who might be thinking that I'm just kind of hating on Samsung, I do daily drive a Samsung device myself, so uh, the problems that I have experienced there obviously will translate to every other device and I am not too fond of the, the phone that I have considering that it's one of the most expensive devices that they have to offer and I'm just a little bit disappointed for the price so the disappointment kind of translates to every other Samsung device just because they all are running the same kind of uh, Samsung UI 
skin, which works uniformly the same on every phone. It has the same kind of feature set almost. Now anyway, I just opened up that camera like I mentioned. Come on. Come on. Come on. There we go. So we're going to start off with the uh, normal photos. Let's just take this little keycap right here. So this will be a just normal photo. That took way too long to capture. There go, there's a two times zoom. And now we're gonna go to more. That's not more, there we go. And we're gonna select macro. And there we go. So now we have three different pictures. Starting off, we're gonna look at the macro. This actually allows me to zoom in way closer than I expected. So there we go. Uh, it kind of looks blurry. Let's look at the second one. This is a two times zoom. Uh, color wise, uh, looks significantly better in terms of like the background being not yellowish. The keycap has a more natural color. And in terms of the quality, I think the quality wins on on the two times zoom. Now it might look like they're about the same, uh, but one thing that I want to point out is the two times zoom has a little bit of this like weird texture that you can see that has more of like random uh, just engravings. And if you ever looked at this keycap really closely with an actual better macro, that's kind of how it looks like. Uh, now with a with a macro. It just looks like it's just sprinkled on with something. Uh, even though it tries to sharpen the image so it looks better than it should be. That, that's the actual like truth. This image is artificially improved. This is not the actual photo that I captured. Uh, but you can see it in, in details that shouldn't... Well, for instance, uh, this arrow, right? It's way too sharp comparing it to the rest of the picture. Like this surface right here. If it can capture this sharpness uh, on the on the little arrow, it should also have a little bit more detail in the surface, which it doesn't because it's artificially sharpened. It knows that there is a line and it just refines it. Kind of like, for instance, the S23 Ultra does with the moon, where it just kind of artificially improves the quality of it. Now, this is just a normal uh, wide, uh, wide shot. Then you can also basically get super close to it. Uh, it's, it's not as good, I would say, uh, but it's still really close to, to this one. And both of them are pretty, well, significantly better macro shots when it comes down to, to actual like close-ups than the actual macro lenses. That's why I always say that the macro on these kind of devices, even at mid-range, uh, is absolutely the joke. Uh, this is something that you will never use, never should. So there we go. Now, I don't think there's anything uh, to really say it's uh, like positive or negative about this device. It is technically a budget device. And the only thing that I will say for people that are just thinking about picking up this device is to look at other alternatives. This phone costs more than it should be and it actually works worse than I expect just by using it uh, throughout the setup it was lagging it has zero content on this phone uh, apart from like the pre-installed application and it was already running slow throughout the setup that is usually not a best sign so I would probably recommend looking for other alternatives um, over just the Samsung, unless you really want a Samsung device, then you just get to pay the premium for no actual reason apart from the brand. But if you want a better device in general that performs just better than this, I would probably recommend looking at some uh, Realme, uh, Xiaomi, no, not Xiaomi, oh, Xiaomi too. I don't recommend Huawei's just because they don't have play services. Uh, but any of the Chinese brands will be cheaper while also working better than this. And honestly, the ones that have been released recently will also look better than this. So 
if you're not looking specifically for Samsung phones, I recommend looking somewhere else. So there we go. Now, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.